Hello everybody. Today we will start module 5 which is the last module uh, for the solidification uh, processing courses. So, in this case we will try to discuss various solidification techniques. Actually we have gone through that different solidification theories and specific to in casting process in general as well as the welding process. But this oil solidification techniques will try to understand the casting process through the heat transfer analysis and roughly you can estimate the solidification time also different cases. And uh, apart from this thing we will try to discuss uh, very specific solidification techniques for example, zone melting, rapid solidification uh, these different cases we will try to discuss and some kind of the simulation or demonstration will try to explain in the rapid solidification because that is the one of the aspects in the solidification techniques how the structure and metastable structure is usually formed in the rapid solidification process. So, uh, this is uh, overall uh, this different solidification techniques will try to focus mainly on the heat transfer analysis. So, start with the sand casting and the metal, uh, metal mold casting. The casting processes we know, but here the focus is something different. We will try to understand the aspect of the heat transfer in the different casting processes. Now, let us start with the uh, this uh, we start with the heat conduction, but before that we try to understand the what is heat conduction, how to represent the convection and the radiation associated with the in, in casting process. So, first uh, mode of the heat transfer usually we know that the, there are three, three different modes of the heat transfer conduction, convection, radiation and we can easily distinguish how the conduction there is a medium is required and medium uh, is basically responsible to conduct it from one point to the another spe, um, certain distance and uh, convection. So, here also heat transfer occurs, but it is a there is a movement of the medium from one position to another position to uh, convect the heat in this cases and radiation it is no need to uh, any kind of the medium is required to transport the heat. So, these three different basic modes of the heat transfer and uh, we first we understand that uh, the heat conduction. So, it is follow the Fourier's law of the heat conduction we usually know that heat flux Q equal to minus or total heat transfer Q equal to Ka dt by dx. K is the thermal conductivity and uh, we see that T dt by dx is actually it is a, it is called the temperature gradient and uh, uh, A is the cross sectional area and uh, uh, normal to the heat transport. I think in this case is total heat transfer Q, but heat flux if you try to represent that Q dot divided by A that represents the heat flux. Now, in this case we say that K a dt by dx and we put one negative sign also it means that it is a negative temperature gradient exist in the heat transfer uh, this thing because heat is transported from high temperature to the low temperature zone. So, when you considering from high temperature to low temperature zone in this case gradient becomes uh, negative. We will discuss uh, one by one just to look into different expression for that. But if we look the transient temperature distribution is actually linear. So, if we see that that it is a this particular equation the indicates the steady state equation and it is a unidirectional heat flow because we consider only dt by dx it is a function of uh, temperature it is a function of x only that is why it is unidirectional heat flow and it is steady state because we are not considering the time component or variation of the heat transport as a function of time that we are not considering. But actual transient temperature distribution is might be nonlinear in nature. So, before that let us look into one uh, uh, element and to understand the what way the heat conduction occurs. So, suppose at a distance x and we assume that only one direction the heat transport occurs and over delta x is the distance and the or maybe you can say thickness of the material here in this case. Now, we try to apply the conservation of the energy, conservation of the energy. So, total uh, if we q is basically flux in this case actually it should be Q and then Q by A is basically the flux we understand this thing. Now, if we consider the heat flux uh, this Q x the along the x direction into A total heat transport uh, at a distance x that is equal to at a distance Q x plus d x the variation of the heat flux at Q x plus d x at a distance this is flux cross section area normal to that this is the cross sectional area and this is same in this case also a q x x plus d x. So, at this point that is the heat flux 
and what is the tangent temperature variation within this that is the A delta x cross section area into delta x is basically this indicate the total volume this volume and the specific heat Cp uh, the specific heat and density. A uh, density and the variation of the temperature with respect to time del t by del small t. So, here rate of temperature increase del t by del small t indicates the rate of temperature increase. So, so this is the conservation of energy for this small element uh, we can see that at a distance x and at a distance x plus delta x and uh, in this case we are assuming the variation of the temperature with respect to time here and then if we look in, in this way that further we can process it that uh, that uh, limit suppose del x tends to 0 then q x plus delta x minus q x q x plus delta x minus q x divided by delta x equal to minus of rho C p C p is a specific heat into del t by del small t. So, here capital T is the temperature and small t is actually time. So, this is the temperature variation with respect to time. Now, if a delta x tends to 0 then we can say that the heat flux between these two distance it is basically the variation of the uh, heat flux del q by del x uh, this is equal to minor rho C p del t by del small t. Now, also in a Fourier risk conduction the q equal to minus k into del t by del x also that we know the heat flux. So, here we put q uh, minus k into del t by del x equal to minus rho C p del t by del t. So, from here you can find out that del t by del t equal to 1 by rho C p uh, del by del x k del t by del x. So, this is the expression. So, tangent temperature distribution uh, it depends on the the material properties, the density, specific heat of this particular material and thermal conductivity. Now, if we assume the k is uniform, so k is not varying with respect to x or I can say the k is constant in this particular unidirectional uh, heat flow. In that case, so we can take we can this can be we can write 1 by uh, rho C p into k into del 2 t by del x square. So, that and we know that k by rho C p. So, k by rho C p is basically indicate the thermal diffusivity alpha in this case. So, here alpha equal to k by rho C p. Now, this is the uh, equation in this particular case. Now, if we consider we can reach this is the tangent equation tangent heat, uh, heat transport following the uh, conduction. So, in this case if we assume that it is a steady state that means there is no temperature variation with respect to time then steady state situation it becomes equation converted to del 2 t by del x square equal to 0 because at the uh, tangent steady state so its temperature should not vary with respect to time. So, therefore, del t by del small t should be 0 slope equal to 0. Now, this is just an uh, understanding that one directional heat flow uh, in case of the and following the conduction mode of the heat transfer in a uh, solid medium and uh, that uh, using this will do further analysis also. Now, if you look into the convective mode of the heat transfer, so here we start the Q equal to uh, we start that Q equal to the conductive heat transfer Q equal to uh, K del T by del X minus ok. And but in this case when this is the conductive mode of heat transfer when it is convective mode of the heat transfer then Q equal to H into temperature difference T 0 minus T infinity, T infinity is the outside medium. So, here K is the thermal conductivity and H is the heat transfer coefficient. So, in this case units should uh, must be different, we will discuss, we will check also what can be the units of the small k, the thermal conductivity and what can be units of the heat transfer coefficient. Now, if this is the situation that H equal to T 0 minus T infinity means suppose this is the solid medium and this is the air is there. So, here the temperature is T infinity and here at this point uh, is the T 0 temperature. So, therefore, uh, it is transporting heat on the, on the surface T 0 to the temperature difference what is the on the surface of the solid medium and uh, the temperature of the air surrounding medium here. So, here the from the surrounding medium the solid to this is the solid medium 
and, and this is the, the air is there. So, already mentioned. So, from here to here transport of the heat in the mode of the convective mode of the heat transport. So, in this case it depends on the temperature difference T0 minus T infinity. So, uh, uh, since T0 is much greater than T infinity, so therefore we consider the T0 minus T infinity as a positive. So, therefore Q equal to H into T0 minus T infinity. So, H is the heat transfer coefficient and it depends on the geometric shape and this thing and interaction between these two media solid and what uh, medium that means air is there, steel air is there, forced air or uh, in these two cases the heat transfer coefficient can be different depending upon the outside medium. Uh, the nature of the outside medium. So, therefore, uh, now we see that uh, if Q equal to uh, uh, here the T0 and suppose in the solid medium here the TL, so high temperature and here T0 high, higher temperature to the lower temperature it is in the in, in this here the mode of the heat transfer equal to conduction and from the surface is the mode of the heat transfer equal to convection. So, in the heat conduction if when you write Q conduction equal to minus K A dt by dx total heat transport in this case. So, the area is this cross section area here area is this cross section area. So, minus K A dt by dx equal to K A uh, my negative temperature gradient means T L and T 0. So, therefore, it can be T 0 minus T L and the distance suppose distance between these two is the L. So, here del x is basically the distance between these two and of course over that there is a linear variation of the temperature. So, from T L to T 0. So, in that case we can write that equation further expand the, the K A and this gradient we can calculate we know the gradient means the T 0 minus T L divided by the distance between these two. So, distance equal to L and that is same as the what is the heat conducted to the surface here the same amount of heat convected away from the surface. So, at steady state situation, so heat flow and the surface should be same as the heat flow uh, on the air, uh, on the surface in the in the convective mode. So, therefore, this is equal to total uh, uh, ok. So, first we discuss uh, this thing um, fine. So, convective mode when there is a convective mode of the heat transfer then uh, from the surface we can write the H into A here multiply by A total heat transport in this con uh, in, in convective mode. T0 minus T infinity T0 this temperature and T infinity the outside air temperature T0 minus T infinity. Now, here we understand that expanding the conduction and convection mode. Now, this we can modify the T0 minus T L uh, by 1 by L by K A. So, this is the rearranging uh, this expression like that. Similarly, we can rearrange this expression T0 minus T infinity to 1 by H A. So, uh, this term actually 1 by L by K A or 1 by H A this is actually known as the thermal resistance for the during the flow of the heat uh, using the different medium solid medium and through the air. So, in this through the air A 1 by H A on the solid medium then L by K A, but that means it is a conduction and here it is the convection mode of the heat transfer and this represent this expression represents the thermal resistance. Now, we can compare is the what we can uh, estimate the thermal resistance that Q equal to we know del T, but the, it means that uh, this expression is something it is written that any conduction or convection in general we can write Q equal to this temperature different uh, temperature difference. So, del T by the uh, R T, R T mean is the thermal resistance. So, R T can be one L by K A or it can be 1 by H in general. So, this equation we can compare here also that current flow of the current electric current the V uh, V by R. So, so we know the V equal to I into R where R is the resistance to flow of the current. So, you can compare here equivalent to here V is the potential differences, I is the flow of the current and R is the electrical resistance that will try to resist the flow of the the electric current. So, similar equation in terms of the thermal equation we can represent the similar way here Q is the uh, this potential in that means the in total heat flow the, which is equivalent to I here and delta T is the uh, v equivalent to V, V is the potential difference and delta T is the temperature difference. When the, there is a temperature difference then heat will flow from particular direction depending upon the gradient of the temperature. And R electrical resistance, but in this case R T is the thermal resistance. 
So, this way there is a having similarity. So, similar way we can what way we can explain that heat transport through a medium uh, sorry the uh, current conduct um, conductivity through a medium and the similar way we can uh, explain the heat transport or heat conduction uh, within the solid medium or the convective mode of the heat transfer. So, we can use this concept of the thermal resistance the different way also. Next, uh, we will try to look into this thing suppose it is a steady state situation. So, say suppose this is the medium, this is the one medium 1 which is the uh, convective mode of the heat transfer occurs from here to this, um, uh, this, this is the solid medium and this is again air medium. So, a, I think medium 1 and uh, sorry this is 1 and it, this is medium 2 and both are having different values of the heat transfer coefficient from the solid medium when interacting with the gas to the solid medium. So, heat is flowing and at steady state situation mean what is the heat is steady state situation the heat flow in part that along the x direction is not changing and in that case this uh, before entering to the solid medium it is a convective mode of the heat transfer here. So, convective mode of the heat transfer you can write that Q equal to H 1 A. So, suppose heat transfer coefficient in this case H 1 in this particular medium. So, H 1 this is the cross section A the temperature difference. So, temperature difference should be higher T infinity 1 to T 0. So, then T infinity 1 uh, minus T 0 such that T infinity 1 is greater than T 0. So, then heat will flow in this particular direction along the x direction. Now, same rate of the transport will be the same then heat flow that is equivalent to the what is heat conducted through the solid medium. In this case, you will do K A d T by d x. So, K A t 0 minus so, it is the higher temperature this is the lower temperature. So, T 0 minus T L divided by distance between these two equal to L. So, T 0 minus T L by L and same amount of the heat transport by convection mode from this, this medium. So, in this case suppose heat transfer coefficient is different H 2. So, H 2 into cross section area this is the cross section area from the surface and heat is transferred from surface to the this medium and that temperature difference equal to T L minus T infinity in this case T L definitely T L uh, greater than T infinity 2. So, this is the equation now if you if you further um, uh, modify this equation is like that T infinity minus T 0 divided by 1 by H 1 A then T 0 minus T L and in, in this case L by K K into A that is equivalent to the uh, T L minus T infinity 2 by 1 by uh, H 2 A. So, that we represent this thing in terms of the uh, thermal resistance and here the potential difference in this case the temperature difference because the temperature difference is responsible for the transport of the heat in this case. Now, if we add we know that uh, in this case the A by B equal to uh, C by D equal to E by F that is equal to A plus C plus E by equal to B plus D plus F. So, this uh, calculation we apply here also then we can say that T infinity minus T 0 plus T 0 minus T L plus T L minus T infinity divided by this plus this plus this. So, 1 by H 1 A plus L by K A plus 1 by H 2 A. So, 3 component. Now, this balance is other. So, we are getting the T infinity 1 minus T infinity 2. So, these two temperature we know and if we know uh, this cross section area we know heat transfer coefficient H 1 K H 2 A. So, unknown temperature can be evaluated or can be calculated using this relation. Now, uh, suppose we want to know what is the temperature T 0. So, we use this relate uh, this expression to this expression. So, from here we can find out what is the values of the temperature. So, like that we can do several uh, manipulation uh, in, in such a way that rearranging the equation will be able to the unknown uh, values temperature. Uh, from this particular equation, but of course, in this case the assumptions is that it is in the steady state. So, no higher we can find out the distribution of the temperature or time component is comes into this particular expression. So, uh, these cases we understand that this is the cases now we will try to look into the using this concept of the convection and uh, conduction we can calculate the rate of the solidification in casting process. So, now we will try to understand the how can estimate the total solidification time in the casting process, but you know uh, in a different and uh, in a casting process the there are steps are there. So, in uh, a thin layer is usually formed near the relatively cold mold over. So, for, for example, the we represent the casting process in the from the perspective of the heat transfer in such a way that this outside medium is the air and then mold wall is there. 
So, mold wall is there and then within the mold wall there is a pouring of the liquid metal, liquid molten metal and liquid molten metal just come into the contact with the cool mold and then immediately solidify and in particular the solidify uh, uh, the solidification occurs and then this is a liquid molten liquid molten metal is there uh, remaining part of this thing. So, this is the typical situation in a casting process uh, in the uh, when you try to explain the casting process and how, how the heat transfer occur. So, here if we look into the temperature distribution also. So, here uh, liquid metal is very close to the superheating temperature and when it is solidify the already solidified zone the at this point it is basically the solidification temperature T f and here the temperature is the uh, T p that means peak temperature which is higher than the T f and since this is already solidified it is also create some kind of the thermal resistance mm. and therefore, the when but when it is in contact with the mold interface the liquid metal. So, mold interface liquid metal is in contact then the so there is a change of the phase. So, maximum resistance might happen between the when the change in the phase between the mold and the uh, solid. So, some thermal resist the, the uh, resistance occurs between the mold wall and the uh, in contact mold wall with the liquid metal. So, there you can find out. Then next some resistance will occurs through the when the uh, heat flow will occur through the mold wall. So, when the liquid metal is solidified, but heat has to be extracted through the mold wall and the mold wall is in contact with the air. So, from air the mold outside wall to the air there is will the mode of the heat transfer with the convection. So, all these cases it is a conduction, but between the mold other side of the mold to the air it is in con connect. So, at this part there will be the mode of the heat transfer will be the uh, convection. So, this is the typical uh, uh, the heat transfer phenomena associated with the casting process. Now, we see in particular point is that the heat rejected by the liquid metal definitely is dissipated through the mold wall and of course, we can see the heat should be dissipated through the mold wall as soon as the figure. So, therefore, if we consider all the heat transport there are might be having 5 different thermal resistance components from the figure we can see that. So, in this case some resistance components will be there in the in this particular phase then solid phase already solidified. So, between the uh, liquid metal and the uh, mold interface and within the mold and then mold to air. So, all these thermal resistance components are associated with the casting process. So, therefore, there are two different categories of the casting process we usually consider one is the large casting using an insulated mold usually for the sand casting process we this situation arises or investment casting this situation arises and here thermal resistance is mainly offered by the mold mold wall. So, in this case uh, mostly the whatever thermal resistance is we can observe that is occurs because of the mold wall and resistance for the other components we can neglect. So, from the basis of this thing considering the resistance only the mold wall then based on that we can do the heat transfer analysis uh, and this in case of the large casting, large sand casting or la investment casting. Now, here if you try to understand the what is the investment casting. So, example is the dry sand mold casting is there. For example, this is the cast volume is there and this is the sand uh, 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 component is there, sand mold is there. So, mold is basically holding the liquid metal. So, liquid metal will solidify when it is the transport the heat through the mold wall. So, in this case we neglect the resistance by the by liquid phase resistance by this part and here we considering the resistance because of the mold wall and we can do the analysis what can be the temperature distribution in the mold wall and we can from there heat transfer analysis through the mold wall we can estimate the what is the total solidification time specifically in case of the sand mold or casting process. Now, here heat is rejected by the liquid metal is dissipated through the mold wall we are assuming that heat is rejected to the mold wall which is dissipated through the mold heat is rejected to the, the interface and then it is dissipated through the mold wall. So, using that we will try to analyze this thing. Now, we take uh, uh, pick uh, this particular uh, uh, this case as a solidification of the large casting in an insulated mold this is the more generic term we can utilize that large casting in an insulated mold. So, in this case the example is the sand or investment casting. So, entire thermal resistance is offered by the mold wall and in this case the freezing time by considering only on the thermal resistance by the 
uh, mold region. So, thermal resistance on the mold region whatever freezing time uh, is basically considering here also and by neglecting the whatever other the thermal resistance we are neglecting in this particular case. So, suppose assume that this is the mold wall we can see this is the mold wall and one sided this side the uh, cast volume is there and this is the this side is the sand mold. Now, we are interested to know the what is the suppose this is the x direction for to the mold wall and what is the temperature distribution along this direction. So, here the initial temperature of everywhere it was the initial temperature was theta 0 we can assume theta 0. Now, we can assume the since the sand mold casting the relatively the size of the mold wall is very high. So, in this case we can use the large mold and mathematically we can assume the x tends to infinity and at t equal to 0 uh, uh, liquid metal is at theta p. So, exactly before start of the solidification. So, that liquid metal is in theta p. Theta p is the, the liquid metal is some superheated condition. So, it is a it basically when it solidified start is basically melt the solidified uh, melting point temperature or uh, um, uh, the solidification start, but initially it is in superheated condition. So, that is why we say that at time t equal to 0 liquid metal is at the theta p. Now, mold when it is just in contact with the mold phase it is solidify instantaneously. So, in this case so I mean to say that theta equal to theta f. So, that means theta equal to theta f at t equal to 0 these are maintained this value till the completion of the uh, solidification. That means, in this mold wall is basically it is the temperature theta equal to theta f at t equal to 0 and it is maintained throughout the solidification process. Now, the temperature distribution within the mold wall as a function of time t is given by this particular expression. I am not explaining the how this equation is come, but this is one of the solution from the heat conduction equation and we can see that for one dimension case the temperature distribution along the mold wall. So, represent like that theta x minus theta 0, theta 0 was the initial temperature equal to theta f, theta f is the freezing temperature or the melting temperature. So, theta f minus theta 0 the difference between this to 1 minus this is all the error function E r f x by twice root of alpha t, alpha is the thermal diffusivity, t is the time component here, x is the distance here and theta f equal to freezing temperature which is different from the theta p temperature and theta 0 is the initial temperature. Now, the this expression if you try to look into that before that uh, further look into the uh, expanding this expression we, we can see that error function uh, can be represented like that error function z uh, e r f z as a function it can be represented the series uh, 2 by root pi into uh, z minus z cube by 3 into factorial 1 plus z to the power 5 pi minus 2 this is the nature of the expression of the error function z. So, now derivative of this z function d by d j equal to error function z equal to twice by root pi e to the power minus z square also directly either we can do this expression derivative for this thing individual term the derivative we will get this term directly we can d by z is z e r f z equal to is basically 2 by root pi e to the power minus of z square. Now, other way uh, error function can be represents like that error function equal to z equal to this it is a expanded uh, uh, the, the for the series form but we can uh, integral form we can say the error function z equal to 2 by root pi integration 0 to z e to the power minus x square dx this is the integral form expression of the error function. Now, if we do the d by dz equal to error function z it becomes 2 by root pi into e to the power minus z square. So, that is the uh, expression. So, this will be useful for further calculation of these things. Now, rate of the heat flow we can calculate like that we know the rate of the heat flow in conduction mode the q dot equal to minus k a d t by d x. In this case minus k a the d theta by d x. So, theta x is the temperature distribution as a function of x and of course, we are interested to know the rate of the heat flow uh, and this surface this surface. So, what is the rate of the heat flow on this surface that to do that we know the temperature distribution theta x as a function of x and then uh, when x equal to 0 it indicates the values of the temperature at this point at the at the interface. So, that is why we have calculated first del theta by del x then take the values of the del theta by del x at x equal to 0 it exactly indicates at the interface between the mold wall and the liquid metal what is the rate of the heat transfer. Now, we can so we can see that q dot equal to minus k d theta by d x. Uh, so, here if you see 
uh, del theta x by del x equal to uh, here you can see that uh, theta f minus theta 0 uh, minus of that and uh, d del by del x equal to error function e r f x by twice root alpha t. So, this is the this we can do that theta f minus theta 0 here. Now, error function we can say that x minus twice root alpha t equal to say for example, z. Now, d by dx into error function here x by 2 into z. So, in this case error function of z. Now, here you can see that it can be d by dz into dx uh, dz by dx. Okay. So, if this is the case, so dz by dx dz by dx equal to uh, 1 by twice root alpha t, but t is the independent of the spatial distance. So, x and t are independent in this case. So, that is why we represent the spatial distribution of the temperature theta x, but at the same time it is a, as a function of time t. So, once you do that and put this twice by root x and we can del theta by del x, but at x equal to uh, 0, here you can see that uh, it indicates that minus theta f minus theta 0 del by del x uh, uh, error function this one equal to uh, this is a twice by root pi. Here I can see that here you can see the d by dz error function z equal to uh, twice by root pi e to the power minus z square. Z square means uh, uh, x square by 4 alpha t into del z by del x del z by del x equal to 1 by twice root alpha t. Now, if we put it at x equal to 0 then this term will be 1 e to the power 0 will be 1. So, it becomes 2 by root pi into 1 by twice root alpha t thing like that. So, if we put it uh, 2 to balance and the 1 by root pi 1 by root pi alpha t. So, here we have 1 by root pi alpha t is there and k a is there and minus of this thing in minus of balance then theta i minus theta 0. So, this is the rate of the heat flow at the interface uh, we can calculate uh, this in this case. Now, the total quantity of the heat flow across the mold phase up to certain time t 0. So, it is the rate of the heat flow q dot in that q dot. Now, q dot at particular time t 0. So, q what is the time 0 to t 0 time? What is the total rate of the total heat flow? Total heat flow here we have written the at time t 0 total heat flow is basically integration of q dot d t because it is varying with and 0 to t 0. So, it is that uh, 0 to t 0 q dot d t and q dot we can know the expression a k theta i minus theta 0 root over pi alpha into uh, uh, root t and that having 0 to t 0. So, if we put this thing we are getting the root of t, t 0. So, total amount of the heat transport at the time t 0 counting from 0 to t 0. Now, uh, in this case, we can see that is the, the rate of the heat transport quantity of the heat flow across the mold interface. So, this calculation we are calculating at up to time t 0, what is the total amount of the heat flow through the mold phase and here we are looking into the temperature distribution of the mold phase and the, at the interface at x equal to 0 we are calculating. So, all the parameters here the property is the uh, k thermal conductivity alpha thermal diffusivity is basically associated with the mold material properties. So, in this case if it is the sand mold casting then it should be the properties of the sand. So, mold material properties. Once it is done now we, we look into the heat rejected also at the same time what is the by the liquid metal because liquid metal we try to reject some amount of the heat and that that heat will be transported through the mold wall. So, in the same time what is the total heat rejected by the liquid metal we can say that rho m. So, rho m is the the density of the liquid metal density of the metal and the v is the total volume uh, this thing what is the suppose up to certain time t 0 total volume is the solidified volume equal to v. Uh, then latent heat 
plus this is the specific heat, specific heat the total uh, solidification means the specific heat this amount of the heat will be rejected uh, reaching from the superheated temperature to the melting point temperature. So, that is why theta p minus theta f is the to account the superheated temperature to reach the melting point temperature. Once it is reaching the melting point temperature then when it is solidified it change the phase from liquid phase to solid phase in that case. So, latent heat has to be accounted. So, latent heat and the specific heat for the superheating total volume of the casting V and rho m it is the total uh, density of the cast volume uh, cast, cast material that indicates the total heat rejected by the liquid metal and it is count the QR. Now, where V is the volume of the casting. Now, suppose total solidification time uh, is T0 and total volume casted equal to uh, total V and we the this in this case the heat rejected by the liquid metal should be equal to the what is the total heat is transported through the mold wall over the time T0 that must be equal. So, we make is this equal this quantity to this quantity and we can in this case suppose the total solidification time equal to T s. So, therefore, we can we can replace T0 to by T s. So, T s indicates the total solidification time. Uh, for the cast volume V. So, if we make it equal then we can reach that T s can be so t, remember the T 0 should be replaced by the T s and T s we can see the if you tweak in the T s should be finally, is the, the the gamma into this V by A square. So, the where V is the the volume of the cast volume and area is the uh, A is the uh, cross sectional area uh, of the cast volume. Uh, this cross section area. So, it depends on the this uh, gamma is the material property it, it accounts the material properties associated with the molten material and temper state of the temperature as well as the, the mold material both it takes care of by this equation. So, here you can see that the total solidification time is actually depends on the volume by area ratio uh, of the cast component the square of that the in, in this case it is specifically in case of the sand mold casting process. Now, here the gamma is written as this in terms of the material parameter. So, just we, we here in this particular expression we consider T s equal to V in V by S square into gamma. So, gamma can be like that uh, it is a rho m pi alpha and if you see all the material properties some are the corresponds to the mold material properties and uh, others are the corresponds to the, the um, uh, cast material property. So, this thing is the gamma state of the material properties as well as the state of the temperatures the uh, peak temperature maximum temperature superheated temperature theta freezing temperature and the initial temperature these three temperature need to define here and others more or less the material properties. Now, this is the expression and we can see it depends on this thing. Now, this is the very true that we are considering the, uh, the planar interface and based on that we can see that the solidification time is basically proportional to the volume by area square, but it is it was the uh, in case of the planar interface. Now, the planar mold interface is assumed, but in practical the shape of the cast volume can be different if there is a in general we can say that it can be plane uh, interface mold interface the uh, this is the molten metal and the mold interface in the plane interface it can be concave or it can be convex the interface. So, in this case how to take care of all these things the different uh, uh, curve uh, curvature uh, during the solidification process. So, in this case we see that the heat transfer phenomena are different in these three different cases. So, mold metal here is the and heat has the more heat flow because heat is uh, diverging from the at the interface from metal to the when it is going to the uh, mold it is basically diverging and other cases less amount of the heat flow will be there when it is converging the it, if it is a concave surface then heat flow is actually converging. So, rate of the heat flow is actually varying in this in this cases and that we can see uh, we can if we consider the different curvature effect uh, at the mold metal interface. So, how to tackle or how to handle this curvature effect or how to incorporate this curvature effect in the solidification behavior or solidification time in case of the sand mold casting process. We can see like that let us in this to analyze this thing let us define two non dimensional parameters one is the beta, beta depends on the V by area ratio and square root of the alpha into T s alpha is the 
material properties associated with the mole material and volume by area ratio the cast volume and area for that the cast that uh, for the particular geometric shape. And uh, uh, <coughs> lambda equal to uh, is the theta f minus theta 0 the freezing temperature ratio and uh, rho m l dot rho m l dot l dot is basically l plus c m into theta p minus theta f into rho into c. Here we can see the rho into c is the I think corresponds to the mole material and c m theta p uh, is the associated with the uh, this uh, cast material. So, that uh, we have to be um, be careful to look into the what kind of the material properties actually utilizing in this expression in this analysis. Now, CPC calculate this thing dimension of the beta and uh, lambda in these two cases they are dimensionless parameters. So, if we incorporate the dimensionless parameters the two dimensionless parameters then we can uh, calculate this solidification factor this gamma because we see T s equal to uh, gamma into uh, V by a square in this case if you try to calculate but here gamma can be uh, in terms can be present in terms of the other these non dimensional parameters. So, we just rearrange the variables in the gamma is like that rho m root pi alpha into L dot L dot remember L dot equal to L plus C m into theta p minus theta f and 2 k theta f minus theta 0. Now, we can see we can rearrange rho m L dot divided by rho c theta f minus theta 0. So, rho c divided by and we multiply the same thing here also root pi alpha was there and by 2 k here. So, rho m L dot rho c theta minus theta 0 is corresponds to the uh, we can see uh, uh, it is a pi by 4 alpha it is corresponds to that uh, and uh, uh, <coughs> sorry uh, rho this part is basically the 1 by uh, this lambda. So, 1 by lambda square here this corresponds to that uh, this part we can see the rho c by k. So, we can we can put the the next the uh, the k by rho c we can so this thing k by rho c is the is basically alpha here and put the alpha value here and root pi um, is the root pi um, by uh, 2 root alpha square means pi by 4 alpha. So, we can see that it is basically related to the pi by 4 alpha into 1 by lambda square we can see this parameter the solidification constant. Now, from the equation we can see T s equal to gamma into this one V by a square. Now, uh, V by a equal to square root of the uh, V by a. Uh, so, T s equal to gamma into V by a square. So, V by a is e equal to T s by gamma here. If we put it T s by gamma, gamma. Now, V by a by root T s equal to 1 by gamma uh, that we have seen here. Now, V by A is in terms of the non dimensional parameter uh, B beta root alpha. So, V by A equal to uh, equal to beta into square. So, V by A equal to beta into root alpha T s from here you can see the bit beta into root alpha uh, and uh, T s is already there here. And if we put the uh, other parameter value here and we can get the square root of the 4 alpha by pi into lambda in terms of lambda. So, we can relate beta and lambda these are the two non-dimensional parameter we can relate uh, in terms of the solidification. So, uh, in this case. So, this is valid for the infinite plane. So, the straight interface. So, infinite plane we can uh, this is the valid in this case, but this is not in general beta can be represented like that gamma by twice by square root of pi plus 1 by omega into beta. So, omega is the factor here. So, omega equal to infinity for the infinite plate. So, omega e, e, e equal to infinity means 1 by omega equal to 0. So, in this case 1 by omega equal to 0. So, basically in this case beta equal to lambda into twice by root pi and we can see in case of the planar interface infinite plane this is the relation between the gamma and the lambda that these two non dimensional parameters. But in case of the other parameters for infinitely long cylinder this omega factor can be 4 for a sphere omega can be 3. And by solving this here we equation we can get that if it is a quadratic equation of the in other cases for example, for infinitely long cylinder and for a sphere we can see that it is a quadratic equation of the beta. And when we get the uh, roots of this beta we can utilize the one of the roots in this case beta and we put these values of the beta in this non dimensional parameter. So, if you know the put the value getting the values of the beta and from there we can estimate what is the solidification time. 
but actually considering the curvature effect uh, for the during the heat transfer. We can see one example also to understand the how it works. So, solid diffusion time for the complex contour. For example, we take an example of the calculate the solid diffusion time of the two iron casting, two different iron casting when both are uh, poor with no superheat. That means, where the molten metal is poor, we are assuming there is no superheat. So, into the sand mold, it no superheat means that theta p is basically 0 or sorry, I can theta p equal to theta f, we can say that uh, in the sand mold with the no superheat into the sand mold kept at 25 degree centigrade. That means, theta 0 initial temperature was 25 degree. Then for iron, we have given the parameter for iron T f that the freezing temperature is 1539 degree centigrade, latent heat also given 270 kilojoule per kg and density of iron 7900 kg per meter cube. And for the sand mold, for the sand also, then sand properties mean the mold material, here the specific given which is very low, we can see that as compared to the iron, the specific heat is very low 1.15 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Thermal conductivity also very low for the uh, mold material that is k equal to 0 0.85 watt per meter Kelvin and density also low 1.500 kg per meter cube. Now, using this data we want to calculate what is the solidification time for the slab shape casting of the 20 centimeter thickness and a sphere of the 20 centimeter diameter. So, with these two cases of what we can analyze the heat transfer phenomena or solidification time in these two cases. Suppose, first part A, the slab shape casting process, we can assume the L, B, H are the three length, width and the length, breadth and the width thickness of the slab. So, therefore, total volume equal to L, B, H for the particular uh, slab, surface area equal to A into 2 into L, B plus B, H plus L, H and we, which is we can say that twice into L into B because H is the uh, this L and B dimension is very very large as compared to the H. So, therefore, other two terms we can neglect it. So, we can uh, 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 indicate this is the uh, value. So, therefore, V by A in this case equal to uh, L into B into H and A equal to twice L into B cross surface area. So, B B uh, L L so basically H by 2. So, we can see that in a in the I do not know when the, uh, the slab shape casting process we have given only one dimension only one dimension of the thickness is given 20 centimeter thickness and it is understood the other two dimension are very big. So, therefore, for to calculate the volume by area ratio we do not need the dimension of the other two that uh, breadth and uh, length of the breadth of this particular uh, shape. So, only thickness dimension is sufficient to calculate the volume by area ratio and that we can see also it depends V by A equal to H by 2. Now, since super heat equal to 0, so therefore, we neglecting the peak temperature is basically equivalent to the freezing temperature and L dot equal to L here because L dot we do not have no super heat uh, latent heat is counted because of the super heat because super heat is 0 in this case. So, that is why L dot equal to L and initial temperature T is equal to 25 degree centigrade. Now, we can see uh, that delta means uh, in this case the um, this uh, parameter we can calculate T f minus T 0 rho c by rho m into L L L dot. Here you can see that T f T 0 rho c by rho m L dot. So, here is basically lambda we are talking there as a delta so which is equivalent to delta in the example uh, given here. So, here see that delta can be calculated like that. So, all these parameter values are given. So, we calculate 1.22. Now, we know the relation between these two beta equal to delta into 2 by root pi delta is the other parameter which is equivalent to lambda actually here and we can calculate the values of the beta. So, once we calculate the values of the beta uh, of course, we calculate the thermal dissipation of the mold material k by rho Cp if we see the k by rho Cp for the mold material we can find out we, we can get this value. Now, beta equal to V by A root over alpha T s from here you can see the V by equal to H by 2 root over alpha into this alpha we have already calculated and now T s is unknown. So, H is known and alpha known beta also we have already calculated here for the in uh, the for the planar interface. Uh, therefore, from here you can see the solidification time is basically 2.964 hours. So, that is the that is second and this thing. So, this is the calculation shows that like that. So, I mean to say that the, the solidification time the approach to calculate the solidification time in this case we can first the uh, try to estimate what is the non dimensional parameter beta here 
and from there we can find out the what is the solidification time uh, for this case. Now, we look into the second case for the sphere, sphere for the second case we know the relation between the beta equal to delta n 2 by root pi plus 1 by 3 beta. So, but delta we already calculated it will be it will be the same in the previous calculation because mole material is same. So, therefore, in that sense here the same values we can utilize twice by root, root pi plus 1 by 3 beta. So, here you can see that uh, if you make it we can get the quadratic equation of the beta and if we take the positive real root uh, from the quadratic solution of the quadratic equation then beta can be 1.62. Now, uh, once we get the beta value in this case now we, for a sphere we can see the volume by area ratio volume equal to the 4 by 3 pi r cube and area equal to 4 pi r square from there we can say r by 3. So, this is the volume by area ratio. So, therefore, now we count on the beta beta equal to V by A root over alpha T s we use this value and from there uh, we can calculate that T s equal to V by A square by ok directly we can calculate T s equal to V by A square by beta square into alpha. So, we put all you know all values are known to us and we can see that it is become 0 0.24 hour. So, uh, I mean to say that uh, in this case uh, we can see that the different uh, um, different cases the is, is a flat shape uh, uh, in, in the interface between the mold and uh, liquid metal or if there is any curvature like sphere or cylindrical shape is there in these two cases we can we can uh, calculate the solidification time but uh, actually considering the uh, curvature effect by two non dimensional parameter and from there we can easily calculate the solidification time and uh, uh, in this case the other part is there uh, the once we calculate the solidification time the in this case the large uh, let us look into very specific case in this says that a large plate of the cross sectional area a to be cast the cross sectional area is very large. So, therefore, the relation between the time after pouring and the distance of the solidification from, from the mold phase uh, we can we can look into this thing and assuming the no super heat. So, in this case we, we assume that if the solidification front move at a distance delta t at any particular instant t from the mold interface. Suppose this is the mold interface, but solidification occurs at, at a distance delta t at time t the distance move the it is already solidified, but here is the liquid metal is there, but this is the mold wall. So, in this case the we can see that the how to calculate the delta t uh, the what is the solidification front move at a time t uh, from the mold wall that is we can we can do different way we can calculate the heat rejected by the solidi solidified metal. So, heat rejected by the solidified metal so that we can calculate the rho m a. So, rho m a is the uh, is the is the density a is the cross section area and delta t. So, cross section area is this one and it is um, at a particular time total solidification from move delta t. So, area and the delta t represent total volume in this case this actually calculate the total volume. So, volume into density it the is indicate the mass and L dot equal to latent heat by considering the effect of the super heat also uh, that includes the super heat. So, it is a change of the phase plus specific heat associated with the reduction of the uh, from super heat temperature or maximum temperature to the melting point temperature. Now, uh, Q r can also be calculated in other way also suppose 0 to T s this T s the solidification time it is a uh, and it is a Q dot Q the rate of the heat transfer in this case into d t. So, that calculation we have already seen that Q dot Q r in, in terms of these things total solidification time twice a k uh, theta f minus theta 0 by root t 0 this calculation we have already seen the other we have we can we can calculate in this case also total solidification time. So, here the I am talking about uh, this part uh, this uh, we just we discuss this thing we can put it and we can see that and total uh, uh, this uh, here this calculation I am talking about this calculation the total quantity of the heat flow across the mold phase up to certain time T 0 in this case up to the solidification time T s twice a k theta minus theta 0 by root over pi alpha into root over of T 0, but in this case it will be the T s. So, once you make it T s and uh, this calculation T s, so uh, it should be T s 0 to T s. So, it should be actually T s 
uh, up to the time t0 ts. So, make it equal this to so both different way we can calculate totally the total amount of the heat to uh, move the solidification front move at a time t, dist, at a time t over the time delta t. So, you, once we make this equal this to we are, we are getting uh, this expression the relation t equal to this uh, into delta square t also finally, we can get the t equal to uh, is basically gamma into uh, delta square. So, delta square means is basically delta t square. Okay. So, from there we can see the delta t is to the power of uh, t the total solidification uh, in this case the uh, total solidification time t s and root square root of the gamma this represents the delta t that means the what is the solidification front move at a time t that also we can calculate from the energy balance in this case the heat rejected by the solidified metal equal to the heat reject passes through the uh, mold uh, interface at uh, the mold metal interface. So, now uh, I think uh, that is all for today and we will try to discuss the other cases of the casting process or the different casting process to, uh, what we can estimate the solidification time for the different types of the or other another category of the casting process. So, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.